When people appear on television or in films, we believe we know them. If a role you've played is sufficiently compelling, or the character you play lasts for years, then viewers associate you with that character. For them, you become, you are, for instance, Miss Zella. In today's program, I'm going to introduce you to someone you think you know. Could you have met her in Wolverhampton, England, or Jonestown, Jamaica? Is she your insurance agent? Or did you see her begging in New York? Miss Zella of Lime Tree Lane is just a part of her life. She is so much more. Dorothy Cunningham is my guest. This is Profile. I am Faye Ellington. <laughs> Dorothy Cunningham is here. Did you know she was begging in New York? Well, let us just clear that out of the way right now, Dorothy. What is this thing about begging in Manhattan? Listen, do you realize Jamaica is the only place you can walk and find money on the ground? Uh-huh. I was short one cent years ago. One cent to buy a subway token to get back down to Brooklyn. And I could not find it. I could not find it on the ground. It was not in my handbag. And I said, night coming down, I have to get back home. And the only way I can do is go beg somebody. So I decided, pride aside, I'm going to go and beg somebody. I'm, once you go like this, zoop, 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 zoop. <laughs> nobody, nobody not pay, no mind. And I stayed there and I said, where I come off is like downtown when it closed down at night. I said, Lord, what do I do? I said, a voice said, look in your handbag. I said, I look in there already. Look in your handbag. I look in there, look in your handbag. So I looked in my handbag, I don't find it. And I vexed the one, I searching, and my finger got through a hole in the lining, and I found 25 cents. And you know that parable about the lady and the widow's mite and nothing. Jesus. When I go home, when I came off my subway, my sister, my brother in law, and their children were waiting on me because it's like night come down. Where were you? But I couldn't spend 25 cents to call the house. But I, I'd be short 26 cents right. now. So you see, when I come back to Jamaica, <laughs> no cashier can thief me my silver <laughs> or my copper. Me want me change because, because I see the value is. of. One cent. The value of one cent. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Dorothy Cunningham, <laughs> you were born in St. Thomas. Yalas. What were those early years like? Interesting. I learned to read at three. My father taught me to read. So my job at the basic school was to write the name of the talkers on the board. Um, we lived in the Yalas, church, um, Yalas Baptist Church yard. Had a house in there. And um, at was, one, your, was your father a preacher, a pastor? Uh, he was a deacon. All right, so you, okay, that's how come you're living in the yard. So I think that's why we were living in the yard. And I re recall once while there, and my father was gone, and I saw everybody with their beautiful straight hair, and I wanted straight hair. So I took the comb, you know, the Duchess comb? Yes. And I held it over the lamp the night to straighten. And it's like all the teeth in the comb just got a. Because that was passing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how old were you? About four. Okay. You know, yeah. What kinds of chores do you remember doing or things that you got up to when you were a little girl in St. Thomas, away from the melting the coal? Melting the coal. I don't think I did a lot of chores apart from picking up mangoes that would um, drop on the thing there because my mother was a sort of sit down, behave yourself. And because my dad taught me to read, I was always into something that reading and you know but I do recall at one stage I said I wanted to my ashes to be sprinkled in you know, this river near the Yellows church because the river did burst you know some storm or the other and the house that was built on stilts was actually lifted off in the night and hitched up in a tree <laughs> the fork of a tree and in the morning, that's where the house was, where the tree catch it up. And you were in the house? And we were in the house. So I always said, if the river didn't get me then, when I'm dead, it can get me. So but you want your answers, so you change no, your mind. Yeah, All you right, okay. <laughs> But parents decided to go off to England. Yes. How, why was that decision made? Who went it, first? It, my dad went, because he had gone to do farm work in the States, because, you know, things were slow in Jamaica. And he'd gone to do farm work, and then from, from the States, he decided, he and his brother, Errol, that they were going to 
try their luck in um, in England. And this was in the early fifties when, you know, the door the was wind open rush thing and was still yes, happening. Yes, and they were everybody was going after the mother country. So my father went first, then my mom, and so my younger brother, my sister, and I ended up staying with my um, my aunt and her husband in Jonestown at their house. And I left here at seven, and my brother left here at five. You went together? Yes. Seven and five? One on month after. W yes. One month after Kendall crash. <gasps> so hang on. After. You went by boat then? No, no. no we went, went by... British... B-O-A-C. No, B-O-A-C. Kingston to New York. Then to England. So it took us the better part of two days. As a seven-year-old, having that experience, what do you recall of it? So many white people. <laughs> I'm from Jamaica, where it's not the norm, and suddenly just, you know. That's when you arrived. Uh, yeah, in but no, no, New York too. In New York know? as well, yeah. But the flight I remember most of all, my brother and I sat. Oh, we went off in my nice little church dress, nylon church dress, flannel baggy that the dressmaker made because I said the time is cold, <laughs> and a cardigan that somebody had given me and my socks and things. This is November. November, okay? I remember on the plane, my brother and I sat together and there was another Jamaican woman who sort of give an eye, but we were in the, the, the flight attendants were responsible for us and I wanted to throw up and the, the lady said, you can't, you can't throw up. I said, you know, I can't throw up. It's going to come up. <laughs> so she called the flight attendant who brought me this brown paper bag and she says, look, when you want to go, you're going to go put it to your mouth like this and you go, <laughs> So, so for quite a few hours, I'm going, <laughs> <laughs> don't know what's supposed to magically come out of the bag when I blow into it, but I'm, <laughs> I never threw up. Good. <laughs> that <laughs> was magic. So let's get you into Wolverhampton. What was uh, the first experience you had when you landed in England? Cold. Unimaginable cold. That goes through to your very bones. Not in Jamaica, you don't have that. And the, the, the thing I saw, my dad forcing his way through with two coats, one for me and one for my little brother. And he put us, jeez, um, to God. feel warm again, eh? Thank God. But then when you go out and you drive and you're going, and I'm looking at all these houses and smoke had come out of the houses and something not right. And the place is so gray. The place is so... I said to people, if you're going to migrate and take your children, do not go in the latter part of the year. Go spring or early summer, where yes. at least you can see sunshine, or, you know. But so you got to Wolverhampton and then it, you had to go to school. Oh, yes. First black family to live on the road. Westburn Road, yes. First, well, I don't know if it was the first, but during my four years at um, Woodfield Avenue Primary School, the only black kid in that school population of 400, and my, son, my brother was the only black kid in the infants. And years later, my, my next door neighbor, Pauline, we met up 50 years later in England, and she gave me a picture, the school picture that they took, that they used to take. You have that still? Somewhere in the house, it is there. <laughs> and she saved it and gave it to me in 2012. When we'll I have a look at it. <laughs> only is me, you know. <laughs> And then after, high, after then, I went to high school, did 11 plus, I went to high school where I was one of eight. So big crowd of black kids now, one of eight. Did you ever experience racism? Yes, because you went from being a sort of um, novelty in um, junior school to being one of a minority. So now you went from being Cunningham to Waggingham and Gollywog and a wog. And a, How did uh, that affect you? Well, I am not submissive. My father always brought me up to have a, a sense of my own value, and so you can't talk down to me. Plus, my brother used to do boxing. <laughs> <laughs> my older brother. So he would always tell me. <laughs> so I, was a, I had a fighting spirit, you know. <laughs> Dorothy Cunningham is my guest. This is Profile. Uh, when we come back after the break, you would hear that her mom and the children came back to Jamaica. And we'll hear about that experience. <laughs> and of course, I know we're dying to hear how she got started on 9 Tree Lane and in theatre, all of that and so much more. Thank you for watching. We'll be right back.